Hey, this is Otis Smith, once again, the host of Interruption Podcast. Please go to my YouTube channel, Otis A. Smith, the number three, and please subscribe and leave your comments. Coming up next, we have a beautiful woman. You see my backdrop behind me, uh, WNBA, now an author. Uh, I'm talking no other than... Monique Billings. She's coming up next on the next episode of Interruptions. Stay tuned. You start out right. Welcome to another edition of Interruptions. I'm your host, Oda Smith. Today, we got another treat. This is my second person who is playing in the WNBA. We're talking about this beautiful lady to my left, my backdrop. Um, in the ATL with the Atlanta Dream, along with myself. Uh, of course, I'm not with the Atlanta Dream, but I am from the <laughs> ATL. <laughs> She's also an author. And I'm talking no other than this talented and beautiful queen, Monique Billings. How you doing? Life is great. I am just so excited to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, shout out to your backdrop. <laughs> Are you Balance notice? Are you finding balance? You know what? It's so it's, it's funny you you should say that because my wife had been getting on me for years to because every business uh, endeavor I've done, like I just dive in it, you know. Like, and she's like, "Look, you got a family, you got this, you got that, right?" And the, all on. the key the key was always finding a balance, okay. and so now. I found that balance, you know, with my family and, and this podcast and in, any other things that I do. So I'm finding the balance. I am finding the balance. <laughs> Matter of fact, you segue beautifully into my first question, which is tell me about the book, Finding Balance. So this book, I would say, is for my younger self. It is the keys, the pieces of wisdoms the things that I've learned up to this mm -hmm. point, I'm only 26, so I'm still young, and I'm of course still learning every day, but the things that I wish my 16-year-old self knew, my six-year-old self knew, right. um, throughout this journey of basketball, and just throughout this journey of life, you know, I feel like as an athlete, and now a professional athlete, throughout my whole career, I've been taught how to train my body, mm -hmm. but not really train my mind, and I was so blessed to have a dad who instilled so much wisdom about mm -hmm find your spirit along with your body yeah. and so that's kind of just how I've maneuvered and like lived my life and I notice like my colleagues or just um, kids younger than me don't have that same um, wisdom or don't have those same habits and so mm. like I said this book is the things that I wish I knew throughout this journey of up, up until where I'm at now and and that's that's key because you know uh, I'm, I'm 51 so you wish the things that you know now, you know, you wish you, you knew them. I, I wish I knew it at 26. <laughs> and you, you, you said, man, I could, I could, you know, I could have maneuvered better. I could have done this better and this. And so I've, I've also, I found out too, that sometimes your mistakes are, you're still on the right path. You needed to make the mistake to get the wisdom because exactly. The only, the problem with being young, what I found out, and I tell my daughters this all the time, is that you think you know more than the people that's been before you. For some reason, I, I thought it with my parents, like for some reason, each generation just think they know more than the previous generation. And, and yeah, I totally agree with that. I feel like I've gone through that. I'm sure you've gone through that too. Yes, but then when yeah. you to the other side, past your I would say mid 20s you start to realize like hold on let me let me tap in with some of my tribal elders let me see what they have to say about things and seek out wisdom and knowledge and it'll serve you well it, it will serve you well let me ask you this question here which is um when did you know that playing in the w WNBA could be a reality that you could play you know professional I would say, okay, photos, photos switch. <laughs> I had junior year in college. Um, that was like my breakout season. And I had done well um, up until then. But 
I didn't know if I was going to make it to the WNBA. I, it's so competitive. So I really didn't even put my mindset on that. I was just playing, okay. just playing and just having fun. And so my junior year, WNBA coaches and scouts, it's draft day, started coming to my games, my practices. They were recruiting me and my point guard. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, this could be an option. I can get drafted, which ended up happening, as you guys see. And, um, yeah, I just realized that it could be an opportunity. I would say my junior year in college. Uh, that, what what were you majoring in since you said you, you didn't know until your junior year? So what were you majoring? Well, I was majoring in sociology. I really wanted to major in communications because my dream job or goal, life after basketball, is to be a television person. And I knew I wanted to do that. I knew I loved talking to people and interacting. And so sociology is just a study of people. Yes. And if I'm honest, I'll probably never use my degree sociology itself but the paper getting the paper that says ucla on that degree is you use it now i'm using exactly you using mean, it. you you've used your degree just dealing with people looking at the the uh the behavior uh especially in the position you're in trying to see who's for you who's who who really loves monique or who loves the atlanta dream monique yeah. you know like so so, sociology it, 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 it's uh, a <laughs> you're using it <laughs> what are what are some of the challenges um being a female athlete you know and uh, let me give you some context of, of, of the question is because like i play i play little league sports i played high school a lot of people thought i would play pro baseball i was a better baseball player than anything and for guys, you know, you for, for us and I, you know, we're going to chase women first. Then <laughs> then when you start getting notarized, then you're trying to figure out who's there for you. Right. But for a female, for you all, you know what? Since you guys began to get hips, breasts, you've been hit on like it get old. Right. It, you know, it, it, at some point it's old. <laughs> For for a guy that say, oh, Monique, you know, you so beautiful. You like, you know, you don't have nothing <laughs> else to say. What are some of them? That's why I asked that question. Like, what are some of the challenges of being a female athlete? Well, as far as like getting hit on and stuff, it's flattering. I appreciate it, you know, because it could be totally the opposite. And I could be walking around like, why is no one hitting on me? Is it something, <laughs> you know, and, so I'm very humble about that. And, mm -hmm. um grateful, whatever. But as far as being a female athlete, there are some challenges. I would just say being discounted. Mm -hmm. um, guys specifically, like, I bet I could beat you in one on one. And that's not a good pickup line. Any guy watching this, please know that okay. that is a terrible pickup line for a WNBA player, just a women's athlete in general. I don't want to play basketball with you. Like, okay. if I'm you come on if i'm gonna date you i don't want to play against you like that's like bringing work home you know what i right, mean right very small thing but yeah just as a female athlete just being discounted i think a lot of people don't realize the work that we really put in some of my teammates are mothers like mm -hmm. go through training camp go through a season go overseas take the baby with them i personally can't even imagine that but i have so much respect from my teammate to our women and just thugging it, putting their families on their shoulders, on their back and getting it done. So there are plenty of challenges that come with being a woman athlete, but um, I think it's too just very liberating knowing mm -hmm. that we have so much power, seeing what we're capable of doing, being able to create life and then go play in a basketball game. Like it's just crazy to me, it's mind blowing, but yeah. I love being Shout out to women, especially women in the WNBA, or just women athletes in general. Yeah, I remember when I saw that when the uh, WNBA was first formed, and you saw Cheryl mm -hmm. Swoops do that, have a baby, yeah. and then come back, and then became one of the you know greatest basketball players <laughs> in, 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 in the in the uh, Naismith Hall of Fame. So, yeah. and let me ask you this: this is a side question, but. Okay. Don't you think, I mean, no, no, don't you think, but don't you find joy in that far as it's the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame? So it's not like, you know, we're going to put the women, we're going to get them their own Hall of Fame over here and the men going to be over here. It's like, no, nah, whatever you contribute yeah. to basketball, male or female, 
you're going in the same Hall of Fame. Greatness is greatness. I love that you bring that up. I never even thought about that, actually. But I don't think that's something that should have to be thought about. Like, why does there have to be two separate Hall of Fame? But I think that's amazing, just celebrating all around greatness between men and women. Right. No, I, yeah. And that's why I just thought that was cool because of, you know, you have two, two different leagues. Right. And, right. and so to see when someone gets in, inducted, you know, they're going right. And, and it's not even a separate ceremony. Like, yeah. you know, I had the pleasure to, you know, interview Teresa Edwards and just, I call her the woman of many hall of fames. When I looked right. up, she's in like five different hall of fame. I'm like, what are you doing? How you uh, doing? Five, you, you called to be in five. <laughs> five different Hall of Fame. I was like, "Go ahead, girl." <laughs> you, you, you spoke of uh, playing overseas. So let me ask you uh, this question: What is the for for for, you, for your sisters in the WNBA? What is that mental space for you guys now when you think about Brittany Griner? And you mentioned sometimes having to go overseas and play. Is that mm -hmm. something that? you guys think about now like is that like a sour taste in you guys mouth now as far as wanting to go play I, well it's not that you want to go play it's a necessity you got to go play overseas but is that a mental challenge of uh, 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 something to get over with or deal with now well i can only speak for myself sure. um thankfully for me it's not a necessity i just mm -hmm been blessed to be able to do it. I could be doing plenty of other things. Like, thank God I'm really well versed. And so I have a lot of different interests and passions, but going overseas has been so fruitful for me over mm -hmm. my past of being a pro. The places that I've been able to go and play, I love these photos. Just keep them coming. <laughs> the places that I've been able to go and play, the people I've been able to meet, like some of my, I would say, best friends live in all these different countries around the world. So if I need a place to stay in South Korea, I'm gonna hit up my home girl. If I need a place to stay in, I don't know, Belgium, I'm gonna hit up my homeboy. You know what I mean? All the people that I've met. So it's been very fruit fruitful for me. But as far as with BG, the whole BG situation, it is, it does kind of leave a sour taste um, in my mouth. Um, I really have to be cautious, think about where I'm at, what I'm packing, who I'm around, like where I'm going, and just have to be a lot more mindful mm -hmm. with sure a lot of my colleagues, WNBA colleagues can relate to that and agree with that. But yeah, it's, it's definitely different now since um, that whole situation happened. Definitely not an easy lifestyle, but it just depends on your perspective. Like I said, for me, mm -hmm. I love I know I'm not going to do this forever. So I want to take advantage of every single opportunity gotcha. that I have. Well, just make sure don't take Pookie with you when you go overseas. <laughs> Cause you know, you know, Pookie, Pookie always go get somebody in trouble. Don't take Pookie <laughs> with you. Whatever you do, don't take a Pookie. Oh, I'm just taking clothes and that's it. The rest yeah. I will get. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just let, just let Pookie know you'll pick him or something up while you're overseas. You know, you bring it back. <laughs> What is the most um, misconception uh, uh, about playing in the WNBA? I would say the most misconception, I think it goes back to being discounted. I think a lot of people might see us and think like we're weak. Like when I play against guys, I'm in my off season right now and I play against guys in and I'm like beating them. And I think they're not really expecting that because I'm a woman. And so first of all, I love playing against men and just guys in general because it's very humbling for them. And then it just, it's great competition for me. I get to play against stronger bodies, quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's great. But yeah, I just think a lot of people, it goes back to just being discounted. I think a lot of people um, have this certain idea of what a female basketball player is, or just a female athlete in general, and that we're not strong, we're not good enough. And I don't know where those ideas come from. I think it's just the narrative that comes with being a woman but i love um disproving people and getting those doves in the gym getting those doves. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask you this um <laughs> what are the mental uh challenges of being a professional athlete uh you know sometimes the fan um at home perspective uh can be 
you, you know, like, um, look, you're getting paid all this money or you're getting paid all this money for this endorsement of whatever it is. You got a great life and, you know, you should be good. You should be happy. You should be thankful and not understanding that, you know, you bleed just like I bleed. Your job mm -hmm. is just different. Your job is just different. But for you walking in those shoes, um, what are some of the mental challenges um, that hurdles, you know, that you have to jump over dealing with, you know, playing professionally, people knowing who you are, dealing with, uh, you know, family, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just getting pulled in different directions sometimes. So I talk about so much of this in my book, but the biggest, I would say, hurdle that I've noticed within myself and just people mm -hmm. that I've had conversations with is definitely the mental side of things and just knowing who you are outside of what you do. And that's something okay. that I, I battle with that every single day because I think about, I just have to have perspective checks all the time. What if something happens to where I'm not able to play basketball anymore? Or an athlete isn't able to play their sport anymore. Who are you outside of what you do? You know, right. you're not the athlete at that point. You're not um, what the media says about you, but that's just, it comes from soul searching. It comes from taking that time, grounding yourself every day. I'm a woman of faith. So spending time in my word in the morning, okay. um, that's the truth. but everybody, everybody is different. Everyone has their own truth, but just taking that time to understand yourself better. I think that is the biggest challenge that has come with being an athlete is what, that's what I personally think. Like I said, there's so many critics out there. And like you said, people who mm -hmm. from the outside in think everything is sweet and that's not always the case. And so you have to really do that mental work. You got to soul search. You have to figure out who you are outside of what you do, outside of what people say and stand on that and stick to that every single day. You really have to show up and just put in that work to get there every single day because you don't wake up feeling 100 percent every day. Right. I'm feeling 80% every day. But if I'm feeling maybe 70% in mm -hmm. one day, I'm going to give 100% of my 70%. And my favorite quote, which is also in my book, is to be better than yesterday, not as good as tomorrow. So just constantly striving for greatness. Like it's this, everything that I wrote about in my book is a practice. Just like we go to practice every single day as an athlete to get better, to sharpen right. our tools, mm -hmm. to, to continue to become. All of these keys are, it's just a practice and you just have to put it into practice every single day and just be disciplined and diligent about it. My, my, um, the, the, the thing about, you know, you playing, um, being a professional athlete, one mm -hmm. of the things, and if you can re remember this, well, hold on before I say this, uh, I'm going to reach out to set the interview. I need my book. All right. I need an autographed copy of the book. I, oh. I need to, I need to get that. It's on the way. It's I, on. I I need to get that. I I'm 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 gonna re, I'm gonna give them my address. I I need to get that and and, yeah. and I need I need I'm, I'm now I'm Pookie here in Atlanta. I need some <laughs> tickets too. I need to come see you live now. I've never been to a WNBA game. What? Okay, never, we're definitely never been, never, been, never never been. Now what what I was about to say is what what I want you to take with you. I I used to do um before I did the podcast and got out the business, I used to do marketing endorsement for mm -hmm. athletes. And so one of the things I would tell guys that I represented to simplify everything for them is, is this, listen, you're playing a game. Okay. Now I understand you at the free throw and there's only one second. So you need to hit both of these free throws or you lose the game. Or I understand you need to hit this last second shot, but that's really not pressure pressure is a mother who doesn't have a job trying to figure mm -hmm. out how she's going to feed her kids. Pressure has been a doctor working on someone's nerve and if you clip the wrong way they're paralyzed. So go play. Right. <laughs> so I try to simplify it. You, right. you know what I'm saying? So you, so you don't feel the weight you know over you i'm like look look the check on the check gonna clear tomorrow trust me the check still <laughs> go clear and like you said you're gonna have a good game you're gonna yeah. have a bad game but some stretches you go you're gonna be all right so finding love, that balance yeah and having perspective like well like you just mentioned i think that is essential because like you said 
we're just so blessed and fortunate as athletes to do what we do, especially as a professional athlete. I get to wear sweats every day, go to the gym, work out, <laughs> eat what I want because I'm still young and I can work it all off. It's like, it's just such a great life. So you're right. Um, that was actually just a perspective check for me right there. So thank you for that. Uh, no, no problem. I'm, a, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a fan. What inspires you to live? I'm inspired to live just because I know there have been so many people before me, pioneers before me who have gotten me to this point. Mm -hmm. I live such a beautiful life. And I know that people before me weren't able to have the opportunities or the possibilities to dream, to travel, to do all these things that I'm able to do. And so I never want to take that for granted. So I'm inspired to live just by chasing my higher self every single day. I know that there's so much on the court off the court um i'm passionate about so many things and i just love i love life you know it's so crazy to say that i don't hear a lot of people say that but like i just i feel good i feel happy and so i'm inspired to live because i want more of that feeling don't lose that spirit you have a beautiful spirit don't don't lose don't lose that spirit because sometimes you know life can be hard and things can 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 happen you know and it can, especially in the time we live in, you know, like I, I woke up just like you did the other day and uh, just heard about uh, Offset. And, and it was like, I was like, what? You know, and, I, and like I said, I'm 51. So I, my, you know, I don't listen to the Amigo, but I know who they are, you know, and I'm a champion my people from the ATL. I'm going, I'm going always and just to see. Yeah, yeah. And just for that to happen, you know, but like you said, finding a balance. And I'm glad that you put a book out because even in the worst of times, we have to try to find a balance because I always tell people God is balanced. You 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 got a left hand, you got a right hand, you got a front, you got a back, up, down, good, bad, sunshine, rank. It's a balance. So I like the title of the book you know, finding, finding, uh, your balance. Um, also, uh, cause Teresa Edwards did a book and also if you, when you get a chance, uh, also if you haven't already do it in audio as well, she, uh, she did hers in audio as well. That's on the way for sure. That's on the way. Oh, and yeah. my last question for you is what is the most misconception about you? That's a great question. I don't think that's something that I think about often. I think from what I've heard from people is like when they see me, they might think I'm not as sweet as I am, or they might think that that's fake or not genuine, but this is really just me. Um, I don't know, some people, have you heard of the resting B word face? I don't think I have one of those. But I <laughs> aura and just how I carry myself like I'm very confident and I think sometimes people can take that the wrong way maybe but I don't know I don't really think about misconception what people think about me or how they perceive me you just too busy you too busy you too busy being you I'm just too busy being <laughs> I'm enjoying my life you know I something that I'm working on right now is like smiling at people upon eye contact because I don't know what I've noticed like when mm. I don't know if you've noticed this but like mm. When people see each other, they don't really acknowledge each other anymore. And I'm very, I have an old soul. Like I'm a very, like I was raised super old school. And back in the day, people would speak. They would acknowledge each other. And how are you? How you doing? I don't know. I want to, I want to speak to people. I want, they I not, want. want they not giving the head nod anymore. Cause you know, when I was coming, you just walk. So, you know, you always get that head nod. I don't even have to know you. <laughs> all right cool like just smiling at people and just bringing out that that energy so yeah i'm not too concerned with what people think or misconceptions whatever i just want to be a light i want to shine brightly and yeah continue to do so oh yeah, that's 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 great that this i wanted to just sidebar i don't really have any more questions but just just a sidebar uh question for you is the um is it funny to you um i know you were talking about you know pick up games you know playing in the gym right yeah is it is is it funny to you that when you do that the pick up you know pick up game in the gym that 
you you looking like, but y'all don't have no fundamentals. Y'all right here. Y'all just right here trying to. <laughs> it, it got no fun. You don't have no dribbles. You, you <laughs> because and the reason I say that is because I know for guys sometimes. You know, like when, when Michael Jordan came on the scene when I was growing up, everybody wanted to be like Mike, everybody wanted to dunk and do all this stuff. And now it's Steph Curry, right? So now uh everybody wants to shoot threes. But the purest of the game you can see yeah. is female athletes playing the game. I mean, every now and then you're gonna get your Lisa Leslie's, you're gonna get your Brittany Grinders who can dunk the ball, but Without being able to dunk, you see the fundamentals. The, I'm, I'm saying you guys have handles too, but you see the fundamental. Do you, when you play in the pickup game and a guy's guarding you, and, you know, he's like, no, nah, I'm going to shut Monique down. See, she, I understand she in the WM. And then you do a move, but then you just gave a pass and everybody like, he's like, because it's fundamental. I ain't got to score all the points. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think a lot of the guys probably aren't expecting it. Like I said earlier, like, we are very skilled, you know, we're professionals for yeah. a reason. I don't expect that. So, yeah, that's it's accurate to say that. <laughs> yeah, see, I'd I be the one coming in the gym with you. Now, the, I told my wife one time, I said, babe, you know, I didn't got old. Because you know you got old when you volunteered to take the ball out. You know, you start volunteering, like, I got it, I got it. Go on in, Monique, I got it, I got it. And and I'm hoping when I pass it to you that you can shoot the ball and it'll go in, so you got to do a lot of moving around. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the show, blessing us um, with your presence. Uh, where can people find uh, your book, um, Finding Balance? Y'all can find my book. It's right here on mobillings.com. Okay. Um, I'm still working on a couple things with Amazon. And like okay. you said, I'm an audio book. So I have some things coming and on the way. But right now, mobillings.com. Go cop it. And you guys, please get out and support her. Go to an Atlanta Dream game and, and check her out. And uh, she's going to leave me some tickets. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm going to be the guy like Cole on Martin. I'm going to be at the Skybox. I'm going to be about to follow. <laughs> yep. that come through. All right. Well, thank you for blessing us. Keep that sweet spirit. And please stay safe and continue to be blessed. And we love you. And we want to have you back on the show. And when, when you come back, I'm a, I want to pair you up with Teresa Edwards. Yes, let's do it. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.